So before we continue on and get too deep in the weeds with math, I'm going to uh, keep this fairly practical, right? What we're going to do, and the purpose of this is that we are looking at comparing array lists to linked lists, and we because we'll find that array lists are actually quite bad at doing some things and quite good at doing other things. So that's what we're going to look at, and then we'll see when we learn linked lists, that linked lists are actually quite good at doing things because of the way they're built. And so that has a big impact on certain operations that we want to do. Um, so to keep it practical, we are actually go we are going to actually physically time how long it takes for some of our algorithms to take, for some of these processes to take. And we do that by using the system class. Now the system has a nifty thing here called the current time in millis, which returns a long. It doesn't return an int. So it returns a number. And what does it return? Well, if we look at our quick documentation, it's going to pick out small over here, but I think you would be able to read it. So it says it returns the current time in milliseconds. The difference measured in milliseconds between the current sign and midnight, January 1st, 1970. So that's how we measure time. Okay, so we can use that. We can do that at the start of what we want to process. Let's just print it out to see what we get. All right, run this. That's how many milliseconds it's been since uh, January 1st, 1970. So, and then what we can do is that we can, um, we can do something long end is equal to uh, get the same time, get the same time, you know, get the current time in milliseconds, which if we, you know, if we do some enough stuff between it will be different. So let's say we do a for loop, four into i is equal to zero, i is less than, Let's do this, yeah, 10,000 times. So right now, um, if I just simply uh, didn't have something in here, it would run instantly, right? Uh, start and end would have the same time, so it'd be kind of useless. Um, and so what I'm gonna show you is something I'll use later to slow down our algorithms so we can see that's um, how they grow as input sizes grow. So this is a little trick you'll see that I'll use, um, where I'll do systemout.print, not print line, and then I'm going to print out an empty string, which essentially means that nothing appears. Um, and if you ever tried printing out a whole lot of numbers, like a giant array, you'll you'll note that printing actually takes a bit of a time. So now, what we'll do is that we we do so we start an algorithm, we do stuff, and then we figure out when the end of that is, and then we simply ask ourselves, okay, what is the end time minus the start time, and that's how many milliseconds this operation took, right? So that took 12 milliseconds. And then this time it says 13. So there's always gonna be a bit of jitter because, you know, my computer has other things going on and other things it might wanna do, right? So, and so that's part of the reason that makes comparisons a bit complicated, right? So it's gonna be relatively the same, all right? And so what, a lot of times what we're interested in is the change that happens when we add an order of magnitude, when we add a zero, right? When I multiply this by 10, right? It doesn't really take too long. And part of this is also because that these operations are super quick. And now after adding two zeros, hey, that added some extra time in. All right, so now we're gonna see how we use this. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start by building a list, array list. All right, is equal to, so array list, uh, let's go ahead and make it an integer simply because those are easy to deal with. Um, list is equal to new array list, and that's it. And then what we are going to do is that we are going to create a for loop. For int i is equal to zero, i is less than Let's go ahead and start with 100,000 items. I plus plus. List.add I. Now this isn't going to take mu uh, much too long at all, right? I'm going to run this. And it runs, and it took basically 18 milliseconds. It took really, 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 it took a really, really, really quick time, right? Um, now, Actually, what I should do over here, since we're testing the add method, we should actually make the, this creation over here. Oh, actually, yeah. 
No. Ignore that. That applies for something later. Okay. Thousand. A million here. And... A hundred thousand versus a million items. That took about ten times as long. And... If I do ten million... It takes a bit longer. Fifteen... One million five hundred and eighty. Sorry, sorry, 1,580 a millisecond, so about a second and a half, okay? Now that's what's happening here, is that I am adding it onto the end. And if we go back to my, my array list example, the way that works is that, um, is that it does a check to make sure that the index we're adding it, adding it to is not out of bounds, the end is not out of bounds for the purposes of adding. Then, if the array list is filled up, we reallocate and copy everything over. Now, normally you might consider this being a cost, but because of something called amortization, uh, essentially this, because this ha doesn't happen every time, in fact it happens pretty rarely, and every time it happens, it takes twice as long for it to happen again, we, we can, in, in our analysis, we consider this amortized, where basically the cost of this gets spread over all those other operations, right? Because it happens rather infrequently. Okay, this whole reallocating thing. So we'll ignore that for right now. Because that's not, it, it, as, you, as you've seen, it doesn't really impact our, the, the amount of time it takes so long. Then, what we have to do, well, we add it to the end so we don't have to shift anything over. And then we store the item. So now, let's consider what happens when we add in, when we tell we want to add the item to index 0. Every time we add an item, we're going to add it to the front of the array. And let it go. And this is a mistake. I didn't make a bug here. There's no bug here. It is running. And to be honest, I have no idea how long it would take to finish. I could probably record until my battery drained, and I don't think it would be finished. Now, why is that? Why is that going on? Now, let me go ahead and give it a more reasonable runtime. I'm going to cancel this. And instead of doing 10 million, I think I'm just going to do 10,000. Let's go ahead and run this. Like 10,000, 18. 100,000 items. Let's go ahead and run that. Okay. Oh, it went up from 14, from like 14 milliseconds to 1,400 milliseconds. So let's go ahead and run this again. At a million items. Okay, and I'll just simply, why does this take so, so the question is, why is this taking so much longer than adding it to the end? Well, we add our first item, and then we add our second item into the front, and the third item to the front, and the fourth item to the front. But every time we add an item to the front, what happens? Well, we since we're adding it to the front, and we've got this array structure, we have to take every item and shift it over. Right? We have to take every item, and we have to shift it over. So if you have 10 items, we have to shift 10 items over to make room for the 11th item. And then when we add the 12th item, we have to take 11 items, shift them over to make room for the 12th item. And then we have 12 items, and we have to take 12 items over, shift them over to make room for the 13th item, and so on and so forth, right? So these two ways of adding things are examples of what we call linear time and quadratic time algorithms. So we're a linear time algorithm where we were adding it to the we were adding it to the end, right? And again, what I was saying here is ignore this because it doesn't happen very often. We didn't have to shift any other items. So it was simply a matter of, oh, we just take each item and we add it to the end. We take the item and we add it to the end. We take the item and we add it to the end. Nothing, there, there wasn't no shifting involved, right? It was a single step process for each of the n items I just wanted to add, right? So that meant that it took, basically there was this linear relationship. For each n, for each of the n items, there is a step. So there, so the overall time was n steps. Makes sense. It took n steps to complete this. Okay. Now with the other item, with adding one item, we'd have to add. Um, so when we, so when we're adding to index zero, and notice it's still running. It's still running, right? It. We're gonna have to add. We add one item to the front. We have to. Then we add another item, and we have to shift all the other items over. So if I have a thousand items, I have to shift. If I have a thousand items, I'm adding the thousand first item. I have to shift each of those a thousand and one items over. Sorry, a thousand items over to make room for that thousand and first item. So that's a thousand steps right there to add my thousand and first item. Okay. 
So that means if I'm adding my nth item, I have to move, I have to do n additional steps. For the nth minus one item, I have to do n minus one steps. Right? So the first item took one step, second item took two steps, then third item took three, fourth item took four steps. And we'll see that this whole, this structure of it takes one step, then two steps, three, four, five, six, and so on and so forth. Uh, if you haven't taken uh, Calc 2 where they go over series, you'll get a small preview here. But there's a proof in Calc 2 that you should learn, that, or that you will be learning, that shows that that is actually equal to an n squared amount of time, where that takes n squared overall steps. So this thing where we have to, for each item, if there's n items in the array, we have to move n items over. This is an n squared, right? Each of the n items that we add requires n. Whereas over here, each of the n, uh, n items required one step. Okay, so that's linear time because there's a linear relationship between how long it takes. So linear time means there's a linear relationship between how long it takes and how uh, and how many items you're trying to work with. A quadratic means there's a quadratic time relationship, right? It's not stuck in an infinite loop here. It is just simply taking that long for my computer. I can feel my computer and it is getting warm, right? This is not just some kind of infinite loop. All right.